it's about time I finally made this video. These are the 14 cards I would get if I had to start my journey over to get 1 million points. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And for our new viewers, my name is John of John's Finance Tips. Now I'm the guy you've seen who's probably had well over 50 plus credit cards and millions more of miles and points, all so that you don't have to. That is, unless you wanted to. Because in today's video, that's exactly what we are doing. We are gonna go over the exact sequence that I would use to build a 1 million point portfolio starting in 2023. And I'm gonna be honest, if you play the game right, you might even walk away with closer to 2 million points by the end of this video. Once you have your million points and miles, you can either start saving big on purchases and you can start packing your bags for that dream vacation you've wanted to take flying in business class or maybe just take your family to Disney for free. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then you've come to the right place. Place. The video is going to break down as such because we have a ton of cards to go over. It's going to be relatively high level. So for every single section, I'm going to talk about the card, the associated sign-up bonus, my general comments and rules and cautions to be wary of, and of course, the running total of points. Now, if you have any comments or questions, I'll drop them down below. But otherwise, I'd say pop a squat, tap that little thumb icon, and if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check out any of the affiliate links for the cards linked down below. And we're gonna go ahead and whoosh, dive right in. A quick note on ground rules is I'm assuming that jumping into this, you already have a good understanding of how credit cards work, you've had a couple of credit cards in the past, and that you're not starting from scratch. That being said, let's dive into our first card, the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This is a perennial favorite and a workhorse in the mid-tier travel space. This card right now has a sign-up bonus of 80,000 points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. However, this is of the recording. Once this video goes live, I think that bonus is going to drop to 60,000 points after spending $4,000 in the first three months. My comments on the card. Even though you'll likely miss the 80,000 points on a bonus, I think the 60,000 is solid coming from Chase. And the reason we want to take a look at Chase first is that they have a very infamous rule called the 524 rule that states if you have had five cards open in the past 24 months, Chase will automatically deny you for the next application. And so that's why we wanna focus on Chase cards when we're first starting out. This card's also not bad to hang on to as an everyday driver. You're gonna earn your 3X on dining, 3X on online groceries, 2X for travel, 1X everywhere else. You get a $50 hotel credit every single year against a $95 annual fee. Effectively, you're paying $45 a year. So let's take that sign-up bonus, add it to our points total, and we have 60,000 points. Card number two the Capital One Venture X. This is actually one of my favorite cards for 2023 and my top travel card for 2023. The sign-up bonus for this card comes in at 75,000 miles after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. My comments for this card, Capital One is known to be increase sensitive. And so we wanna jump onto Capital One early before we apply for a bunch of different cards because they might not like the fact that you're just pulling your credit a ton and applying for a ton of cards. In addition, this card is one of my favorite travel cards largely due to the fact that you quote unquote get paid $5 for a ultra premium card. Here's what I mean by that. The Capital One Venture X competes with the American Express Platinum and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. They're all in the premium travel space. The other two cards, you're gonna pay a couple hundred bucks for every year. The Adventure X, because it gets a $300 travel credit and a $100 anniversary credit, meaning it's a $400 worth of total credits against $395 annual fee, you're essentially paid for it. It gives you the lounge access, it gives you global entry credits. It's a phenomenal card and definitely one that I would consider keeping as well for the long term. So adding the sign-up bonus to our point total, we have 135,000 points. Car three, the city premiere. This is one I'm looking at largely on a points play. It's an okay card to keep, we'll get into it in a little bit, but largely it's because it has an elevated sign-up bonus. And that sign-up bonus right now is elevated to 75,000 points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. Now let's talk about my comments on this card. We're getting a City card early, largely because like Capital One, City has been known to sometimes be a bit increase sensitive. In addition, I'm loving this elevated sign-up bonus. Tr typically at 60,000, seeing at 75,000, I jump on that all day. It's also not terrible as a daily drive card. You've got 3X on supermarket, 3X on restaurants, as well as 3X on gas stations. However, if you wanted to go a little bit off the beaten path, you might take a look at a city custom cash that's gonna give you 5% cash back on your high spend category, and I'm thinking specifically about something like gas stations or restaurants. So adding on the city premier sign-up bonus, we now have 210,000 points. Card number four in the first business card on the list is gonna be the Chase Inc. Cash. This card has a sign-up bonus of $750 after you spend $6,000 in the first three months. However, when you pair it with the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, that $750 cash back can be valued at 75 
points. Now, as for my comments on this card, absolutely love this card. Part of the reason is because there's no annual fee. Second reason, it's a business card, which means it's not going to count against you when we think about the earlier mentioned Chase 524 rule because business cards do not show up on a personal credit report. And let's say you have some big charges coming up. By putting on a business card, it's quote unquote shielding your personal credit report because the utilization does not show up there. So with the Chase Inc. sign-up bonus pulled in, we have now a total of 285,000 points. Card number five, the Chase Inc. Unlimited. This card also earns a $750 cashback bonus after you spend $6,000 in three months. But again, pairing it with the Sapphire product, that's equivalent to 75,000 points. This card is actually a pretty decently easy card to use, especially for small business owners in that it earns 1.5% cashback everywhere. That's awesome, especially if you have a small business and you've got big purchases going through it. Now, my comments for this card is there's another role we want to be cognizant of from Chase, and it's going to be the two in 30 rule. This rule states that Chase will not approve you for more than two credit cards in a rolling 30 day period. So after adding the Chase Inc. Unlimited, we now have a total of 360,000 points. Card number six, the Barclays American Airlines business credit card. This card has a sign-up bonus of 75,000 American Airlines miles. However, it's broken down as getting 50,000 American Airlines miles after you spend $4,000 in three months. Then you get another 25,000 American Airlines miles for spending $10,000 in 12 months total. I'm not gonna count the 25,000 miles after 10K spend in 12 months total because that's a pretty high barrier. So we're only going to count the 50,000 base American Airlines miles for spending the $4,000 in the first three months. My comments for the card. Now, this isn't a card that I would necessarily keep long-term. Honestly, for most of these type of airline specific cards, especially on the business side, three-ish, six-ish, nine-ish months later, psh, I go ahead and cancel the card. So taking the 50,000 points, we now have a total of 410,000 points. Card number seven and halfway through, we have another American Airlines card. This time it's the City American Airlines business card. This card has a sign-up bonus of 65,000 American Airlines miles after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. My comments on this card, it's awesome that it has no annual fee in the first year, but honestly, I'm not gonna keep this card past year one. This is purely a sign-up bonus play. Sure, if you travel a ton with American Airlines and you spend a ton with American Airlines, maybe, but for most of us, it's get the points to make the redemption. And then honestly, after six, nine, 12 months, whoosh, cancel the card. So adding that to our total, we now have 475,000 points slash miles. Now we're on to card number eight and nine. We're taking a look at them together because they're both going to be Southwest cards. The first one is going to be a Chase Southwest card, but the personal flavor, I take a look at the plus. The second one is a Chase Southwest card, but it's the business flavor. So the Southwest personal card comes with a 50,000 mile sign-up bonus after you spend $1,000 in the first three months. The business flavor comes with an 80,000 point sign-up bonus after you spend $5,000 in the first three months. Now, my comments for this card, why are we taking a look at two? Because with Southwest, they have this really cool thing called their companion pass. It's essentially where you get to pick someone to fly for free with you for the year in which you earn the pass in the following 12 months. And they only have to pay tax and fees, which are completely negligible. So essentially, someone can fly for free with you for two years as long as you get 135,000 Southwest points which after the sign up bonus of these two cards, plus the minimum spend you need to hit, you would be well over that threshold. The only thing you should be cognizant of is the Chase 2 in 30 rule, where Chase will only approve you for two cards in a 30 day rolling period. The other thing is 524, but if we've kind of been doing our counting, this is our fourth personal card. So we're just one card underneath it, we should be clear there. So after pulling down the sign up bonuses here and getting that companion pass, we now have a total of 605,000 points slash miles. Card number 10, we're going back to Chase again. This time we're going to get the Chase Hyatt business card. This card comes with a sign-up bonus of 60,000 Hyatt points after you spend $5,000 in the first three months. Now, why are we looking at Hyatt? Well, because I think Hyatt is one of the most valuable hotel chains, period. You get the most bang for your buck. I stayed at an all-inclusive Hyatt. Instead of paying over 700 bucks a night, I just spent at that point 27,000 points. Currently, it's 35,000 points. But regardless, it was incredible in the amount of value you get. You just can't get that anywhere else, whether it's at Mary or at Hilton's at all. So adding in the total, we now have 665,000 points slash miles. Card number 11. This time we're taking a look at Bank of America, specifically the Bank of America Alaska Airlines business card. This card has a sign-up bonus of 50,000 Alaska Airlines miles after you spend $3,000 in the first three months. My comments for this card. Alaska Airlines miles, incredibly valuable. In fact, that was one of the ways that I flew my very first redemption ever. 
Cathay Pacific First Class Boston Hong Kong, $20,000. I pay less than 57 bucks because I use Alaska Airlines miles. Specifically, it was a 70,000 Alaska Airlines miles redemption. The other thing I like this card is the fact that historically it used to be churnable in which you could get multiple of these business cards. So literally in a three month, six month, nine month window, you can get the bonus more than once. So adding this to our total, we now have 715,000 points slash miles. Coming in at number 12, we have another Bank of America card, and it's also a Bank of America Alaska Airlines card. This card has a sign-up bonus of 50,000 Alaska Airlines miles after you spend $2,000 in the first three months. I wanna call out some rules Bank of America has. Specifically, they have what's known as either a 712 or 312 rule that basically states if you have opened seven cards in the past 12 months, they'll automatically deny you, assuming you have a Bank of America checking account. If you do not have a Bank of America checking account, then if you have opened three cards in the past 12 months, Bank of America is gonna automatically deny you. However, business cards do not count against that. As I think about the personal as well as the business flavor of the Bank of America Alaska Airlines cards, these are ones I'm purely getting for a sign of bonus. I'm not really using at all. Six, nine-ish months later, we're canceling it. And adding that to our point total, we now have 765,000 points. Coming in at number 13, we have the American Express Platinum. This card we saved for last because American Express as a bank and issuer, they don't have as many crazy rules for getting approved. And so I wasn't as worried about getting them up front, but they do have massive signup bonuses. The American Express Platinum has a signup bonus of 125,000 points after you spend $6,000 in the first six months. My comments for the card are that this is a huge signup bonus, but for most people, it's probably not worth it. But unlike the other cards that we canceled before 12 months, do not cancel an American Express card before month 13. If you cancel before month 13, they're basically gonna say, hey, I think we gamed the system and they might just claw back your points. So American Expresses cancel on month 13. Wait for the 12 months to elapse, otherwise you might get dinged. And last, but certainly not least, we have the American Express Gold. And this is actually one I would keep. It's one of my favorite mid-tier travel cards for 2023. This card has a sign-up bonus. It ranges 60 up to 75,000 points after you spend $4,000 in the first six months. My general comments for this card is this is actually a pretty good workhorse card, 4X Grocery, 4X on Dining, and I would generally keep this card beyond the first year. And assuming we get the higher sign-up bonus at 75,000 points, then you would have a grand total of 965,000 points at the end of this. Congratulations. Dude, you said a million points. This is 965,000. That I did. But remember, all these cards are giving you massive sign-up bonuses, meaning we had to spend a good chunk of money. Specifically, we had to spend $57,000. So if we add those points plus some of the multiples the other cards gave us, we would have a grand total of 1,029,000 points after these 14 cards. Now the burning question you probably have is, how the heck does someone spend $57,000? The truth is, no one should be spending $57,000. What I mean by that is, if you're going out of your way to spend for the actual minimum spend, you're likely doing it wrong. So for example, when I first jumped into this game and I went aggressive, one of the methods available to us was getting creative. And one of the ways to get creative was you take the credit card, you buy a gift card, you take the gift card, you buy a money order, you take the money order, you pay off the credit card, and you essentially rinse and repeat. That's how you hit a ton of those minimum spends. Nowadays, it's a little bit more difficult in which the way it codes, it's not gonna recognize as many of those gift card purchases counting towards minimum spend. Other methods that you could use today, one, Venmo. I wouldn't recommend putting the entire charge on Venmo, but if you're short a couple hundred, maybe even a thousand, Venmo it. Two, taxes. Last year, I paid a good chunk of my tax bill using a credit card. Yes, you're gonna eat a processing fee, 1.86% or so for using a credit card. However, for hitting a minimum spend, I think that's perfectly okay. Actually, I forgot to mention, for Venmo, there's also gonna be a processing fee, uh, two or 3%, but again, for minimum spend, I'm okay with that. The third method, use your friends, meaning leverage everyone spent. When you're going out partying or going to get food or big group events, be the person to throw down your card. Back when I first got started in the card game, nobody ever wanted to put their card down to manage the group dinners. But for me, I'm like, this is a four, five, $600 bill. Why would I not do that? Trust me, be shameless in that. Because if you want a million points, it's not simply going to be click, click, scroll, scroll. Here we go. No, 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 you're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to get creative to pull it down, but, 
it's 100% doable. And once you put in the work and you've got the million points, this is what it will roughly look like as a breakdown per category. We've got some bank points, we've got some airline points, we've got some hotel points. I personally am a big fan of diversification. Now, having points at a major bank obviously is gonna give you the flexibility, but sometimes if I know that American Airlines is valuable, if I know Hyatt is valuable, and I know Alaska is valuable, I'm gonna get those points. Also because Alaska and American do not have any transfer partners. And if you wanted to be a superstar, what you also could have done is maxed out your referrals from your Chase cards and your Amex cards. That would have added another 975,000 points. You add it on to the little over a million you have, and that's close to 2 million points. And the last thing I'll leave you folks with is the annual fees, because someone is thinking, holy smokes, this is a lot. That, there's no helping around, yes. As with anything, there is going to be a startup capital involved. There is going to be a sunk cost. To play this game, yes, it's free. It's heavily discounted. Instead of paying five, 10, 15,000 for a flight, you're getting to pay less than 50, less than $100, but there is going to be something you need to put forward. One, it's a dedication and time to hit the sign-up bonuses, and two, it is gonna be eating some of those annual fees. However, for most of these cards, it is worth it, either hanging on to it or at least getting the sign-up bonus and paying for the annual fee. Cool, what a video. This is probably a, a doozy. Uh, please comment down for me Anything you think I should have added, anything you think I should have missed, how would you have gone about it differently? This is not a do it in six month thing. This is not necessarily a 12 month. I would say like 16 to 18 months you could probably condense all of this into. All right, folks, best of luck, and I will catch you all next week. Peace.